A lot of our perception of Shylock grows out of the decisions that were made in the 19th century by the, the, the main actors who played Shylock and who were also the producers of their productions of Merchant of Venice. And many of them would cut the fifth act from the play and it was the play, the, the tragedy of Shylock basically. They, they saw Shylock as a, uh, a, a very sinned against character who comes to a tragic end. And, um, and it's tempting to look at Shylock in those terms because Shakespeare has given us so many entry points into sympathy with Shylock. Um, but the more I study the play, the more I come to the firm conviction that that's a complete misreading of Shakespeare. This is, uh, you know, Shakespeare ne never wrote a comedy or a history or a tragedy. He wrote nothing but problem plays and they may be considered a tragedy or a comedy depending upon whether the ending is happy or, or not. You know, as, uh, as my character in equivocation said, comedies end in weddings, histories in battles, and tragedies in deaths. This ends in weddings, you know, three weddings. So it's definitely a comedy. So what is Shylock's function in that comedy? His function is to provide the threat from the threat to the protagonist from which the protagonist is rescued by the heroine. That's the function that Shylock fulfills in the play. And to make the story one of how Shylock is wronged um, and how vicious and nasty the uh, uh, the characters who wrong him are is to completely pervert what Shakespeare wanted to do. And I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm two, I have two identities in this situation. On the one hand, I'm a Jew. On the other hand, I'm a Shakespearean actor. And so my um, challenge in this situation is to be true to both. My challenge is to create a Shylock in a production of Merchant of Venice that is true to what Shakespeare intended. I see no reason to do one of Shakespeare's plays if you have to distort it in order to make it palatable. So I have to try and be true to what Shakespeare intended, but at the same time, I have to try and find a way to avoid feeding into anti-Jewish stereotypes. Um, initially, I thought that that was a kind of an impossible task. The more I read, the more I study, and the more I think about it, I, I think it's entirely possible. It's going to require, you know, some delicate calibration, uh, but I, I think it's entirely possible. I read uh, some critics who argue that uh, Shylock is, you know, uh, primarily a villain and has to be played as a villain and that when he says this he means this that when he first talks to Antonio and says or about Antonio and says I hate him for he is a Christian but more for that in low simplicity he lends out money gratis and brings down the rate of usance for us here in Venice that the important part of that is I hate him I hate him for he is a Christian but it's easy to say that line instead hate him, for he is a Christian, but more for that in low simplicity he lends out money gratis and brings down the rate of usance here with us in Venice. That it's, a, it's an economic problem that he has with Antonio. Um, the more I look at the, you know, so much of how we perceive a character in Shakespeare, in any play, but, but especially in, in Shakespeare, is the first impression that character makes. And Shylock in the first scene that he appears in, Act 1, Scene 3, is uh, uh, he's presented in, with great richness of, of detail. And I see the character as he is revealed in that first scene in which he appears as a, a, a fascinating 
richly textured, very, um, in a lot of ways, accessible person. I see him as uh, someone who, you know, when Portia comes into the trial scene, she says, which is the merchant and which is the Jew? And the, the feeling among the, the Jewish leaders in the ghetto was that when Jews were outside the ghetto and engaged in business with Christians, that they should dress like the Christians, that they should try and um, fit in. And I think Shylock has a real need to fit in. I think he, he obviously doesn't like being spit upon and kicked and called names and things. He just wants to engage in his business and uh, support his household and live his life. You know? And um, so there's a, I think there's a desire on Shylock's part in that first scene to achieve some kind of assimilation. And he's dealing with the character who has been most explosively demonstrative of his negative feelings. And he, in a strange um, twist of fate, this character has now come to him asking for money. And he says, how should I answer you? Should I say, hath the, hath the dog money? Is it possible a cur can lend 3,000 ducats? Or should I, you know, bow low and say, oh, sir, you spat on me and you kicked me and called me dog and for these courtesies I'll lend you 3,000 ducats. But that's what he does. He says, I will supply your present wants and take no doit of usance for my monies. Why does he do that? Why would he do that? You know, it's, there are a number of points in the play when he offers to, to lend without charging interest, when he proposes the merry bond, um, answering why those decisions are made determines, I think, who the character is. And um, I'm I'm starting to find answers to those that lead me in the direction of a, of a, a three-dimensional person.